My name is Jerry Shockey with the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, and I oversee all the youth and educational programs here. And we're we're really excited to bring to you uh, Pro Football Hall of Famer Thurman Thomas as part of our Heart of a Hall of Famer uh, Character Education Series. And and I do know we have some new faces here uh, joining in, new virtual faces, I guess I should say. But uh, you know, the real idea and premise behind this program is to really convey what it took to get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame beyond just the athletic ability. And as we shared with the earlier groups, we know there are great examples of athleticism are, are members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but it took more than that. It took the trustworthiness, the respect, the responsibility, the fairness, the caring, the citizenship, those six pillars that you guys are all studying. It took those things uh, to make it into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And it can be said that most of our Hall of Famers, that if their God-given ability didn't lie in pro football, that they would have, and many have gone on, as Mr. Thomas has, would have gone on to other great endeavors in life, whether it's becoming the best um, teacher, whether it's becoming the best uh, whatever whatever profession they, they, they would have chosen to do. And, and in Mr. Thomas's case, and, and, and president and CEO in the energy business. So um, so there's, there's a, a lot of things that our Hall of Famers excel at. Uh, not only off the, uh, on the field, but off the field as well. So this is a great opportunity for you guys today to be able to ask Mr. Thomas those questions of, of character, uh, of you know what obstacles he might have faced in middle school and high school. Uh, what what pillar do you think is the most important? What you know whatever questions you want to ask him about um, about his character. We we're excited to be able to do this here today and bring this opportunity to you, students. So, but. Programs like these, as we always do, are, are not possible without a great team, and we have to recognize those folks, folks that help make this uh, possible. Uh, first and foremost, we have to thank the folks that are hosting Mr. Thomas, and that's uh, Western New York Regional Information Center. We'll call it the, we'll just call it the NY RIC right now, just to keep things quick and <laughs> quick and easy. But uh, uh, thank you to, to Carm uh, for setting that up, Carmelita Sites. Uh, thank you to Dan Ogilvy, who is the superintendent there, for allowing Mr. Thomas to come into your, uh, to your district there and, and uh, do the broadcast. And, and a person that I left off, and how dare I do this, Ian. <laughs> I know Ian is working yeah. hard to make this connection all possible. Maybe we can get Ian to pop on camera once. Uh, Carm, your, your, your picture came up for me. but uh, uh, oh, I'll be quiet. Sorry. Back to, okay, sorry. If you force the video That's back Ian to them. Right where, where, where are you at, Ian? Doing all the work. What do you think? Go ahead, where are you at, Ian? Let's go ahead. We'll bring oh. him on camera. Where's Ian? How's there he going? is. All right, Ian. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. He's, <laughs> he's the tech person behind the scenes. So thank you, Ian, very much for, for all your work. Uh, and because this technology, as those folks know, that you can, you can you, the saying, you can plan a picnic, but you can't predict the weather really pertains to that because you never know what can happen <laughs> with uh, when you're connecting through the Internet. Uh, but we have to thank our friends at eTech Ohio through our State Department of Education here. Uh, they are the ones that are bridging this together for us. Uh, thank you to Josh and Mark and Paul and all the great folks there at the help desk that you folks have been working with uh, to get you connected. We definitely have to thank the teachers for all the schools because you guys had to make the sacrifice, the arrangements to make this broadcast possible. You've had to prepare your students for it and uh, looking at the questions so that they've been very well prepared. And uh, lastly, we need to thank the students. Because uh, frankly, they're the real stars of the show, and they're going to be one driving the program, so to speak, today. And Mr. Thomas will have a, a, some opening remarks to share, but the large majority of the program is going to be off the Q&A from you guys. So we're really excited to be able to give that opportunity, to you guys. And and last question, last group had some great questions of character. So looking forward to another exciting round with you students as well. But what we'd like to do is we'd like to recognize all those schools that are in attendance today. And the way that we'll do that, I'm going to call upon your school. And when I call upon you, you can feel free to unmute your mic at that time and give a little shout out. Show a little school spirit. Uh, again, I'll remind the teachers, uh, that as we did the last time, uh, close your doors on your classrooms. I apologize for allowing your students to yell in the building. And uh, hopefully none of them get trouble or anything like that. But uh, let's start with Williamsville. Williamsville in Amherst, New York. Oh, I think you, your microphone is muted, Williamsville. A nice picture of me up there, though, by the way. <laughs> Hi, there's just three of us here today. Um, okay. We have just a small okay. class, not like okay. our earlier, earlier sessions. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, let's go to, uh, uh, I know they're going to be, I know they're going to out, outshine everyone. Let's go to North Tonawanda.
Thank you, North Tonawanda. Appreciate that. Very good. Uh, let's go all the way. Uh, think about this. We're going to go from New York to uh, California. Let's go to Malibu High School. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Malibu. Appreciate it. And then let's go to Hamilton, Montana for Daly Elementary School. Go. <laughs> thank you, Daly. And let's go to uh, Rochester, New York. We'll go back to the state of New York. And let's go to 12 Corners Middle School. Wow. I am impressed. I, I think North Tonawanda may have been showed up there. So uh, thank you, 12 Corners, uh, for the, in, in, the enthusiastic uh, hello. Uh, and joining in by few only. They're, they're not going to be interacting today. Uh, we have an Indian Reservation in Montana, Lame Deer uh, Public Schools. Uh, thank you for tuning in as well. well we appreciate your guys' attendance. So uh, what we're going to do now is I would like to introduce our featured speaker here for today. Excuse and that, me. Oh, I'm we sorry. We have Cheektowaga Central here. Oh, Cheektowaga, you're, con you're connected as well? Yes, we're back for I'm round so two. I did not know that. Well, geez, uh, Cheektowaga, go ahead. Thank you, Chief. Right outside Water. of Buffalo. I, I appreciate that. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of Buffalo area schools here connected, and I'm not sure why, but we'll, maybe we'll figure that out here in a minute. Uh, but remind all the schools to mute your microphones too until we call upon you. But I'd like to introduce our featured speaker for, for here today, and that's Pro Football Hall of Famer, Mr. Thurman Thomas. Uh, he was the Bills second round pick in the 1988 NFL draft. He led the NFL in total yards from scrimmage, a record four consecutive seasons. He was the NFL's most valuable player in 1991. He rushed for 1,000 yards in eight consecutive seasons. His career numbers include 12,074 rushing yards and 16,532 all-purpose yards. He was selected to five consecutive Pro Bowls. He was first or second team All-Pro five straight years. He was All-AFC in 1989 through 1993, and he was all AFC second team in 1994. Now, in 2007, Mr. Thomas was bestowed with the honor of, of really the pinnacle achievement for an individual player, and that's being enshrined here into the Pro Football of Fame in, in Canton, Ohio. But that's a little bit about his on the field. Uh, let's look at our, his off the field, because I think you'll find his, his, his off the field is as remarkable and, and more remarkable than his on the field achievements. And I think what he'll find is the most remarkable part is probably his, his personal life at, at home. He's, he now resides in uh, Orchard Park, New York with his wife, Patty, his uh, daughters, 22-year-old Olivia, 20-year-old Angel, 15-year-old Annika, and 10-year-old son, of course, Thurman Lee III. Uh, he is currently the president and CEO of Legends Energy Group, uh, and uh, some other Bills Hall of Famers who are, players are involved with that group as well. He is an ambassador for the Buffalo Bills as well, as you see here today, an ambassador for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He is involved with a number of foundations from uh, Hunter's Hope to the Make-A-Wish to the Big Brothers Big Sisters, all of which he gives a, a, a good part of his time uh, volunteering for. He's also a board member on the jo uh, Johnny B. Wiley uh, Center and the Madeline Pickens Save the Mustang Foundation. So uh, with that being said, what we like to do is give you a little bit of a video bio of his on the field achievements, and then we will ask Mr. Thomas for his opening remarks. Thurman Thomas was the eighth running back taken in the 1988 NFL Draft. When he retired in 1999, he was the NFL's ninth all-time leading rusher. In 1991, after gaining over 2,000 yards from scrimmage, Thurman was named the NFL's MVP. He dominated again in 1992, leading the NFL in yards from scrimmage for an unprecedented fourth consecutive year. The five-time Pro Bowl selection finished his stellar 13-year career with 88 total touchdowns and was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2007.
And if everyone can uh, unmute your microphones for a second and join me in giving a warm round of applause to Pro Football Hall of Famer, Mr. Thurman Thomas. <laughs> Thomas the microphone's yours. Oh. Carmen, is Mr. Thomas there? Mute badge, please. Can you hear me? No, now we can. Now we can. Now we can. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. That's that dog commercial, right? You know. No. no. Uh, <laughs> First of all, <laughs> thank you for the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame for having me in their series uh, to talk about uh, some things that are very important in my life. Uh, uh, thank you for all the schools uh, watching today. Uh, hopefully uh, I will get across uh, some points that have gotten me to where I am today, uh, not only as a former football player, but also a, a dad, a father, uh, a friend. Uh, a guy who really cares about uh, helping other people. So uh, uh, it's not about me today. It's definitely not about me. It's about uh, you guys and, and the questions that you're going to ask me uh, so I can relay the message on to you guys. So today is your day uh, to talk to me as other Hall of Famers have done throughout this great series uh, that the Pro Football Hall of Fame has put on. So. Uh, with that, I will uh, open up the floor to uh, questioning to our first school. Okay, and the, the way we're going to do this school, just to, just to remind you, is that we are going to go in the order of Williamsville, North Tonawanda, Malibu, Daly, 12 Corners, and I didn't forget about you this time, Chictawaga, Chictawaga. <laughs> so we'll go, in, we'll go in that order, and uh, what I want to ask you to do is, is, number one, first, you know, when I call upon you, you'll unmute your microphone. But even after you ask your question, uh, make sure to immediately mute your microphone afterwards so we can eliminate any background noise uh, during the program. So, uh, and again, I want to remind you guys, as we did with the earlier group, you're talking to one, about one of the greatest football players that's ever played in NFL history. And to give you a, an idea of how, how high of an honor it is to be a Pro Football Hall of Famer and to wear that uh, gold jacket that he has on there, there have been over 20,000 players that have played in the National Football League since it started here in Canton, Ohio in 1920. And there are only 273 members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And out of those, only 230 are players. So you're talking not only one of the greats, but, uh, you know, there, there have been a lot of greats that have come about, but he's a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So it's, it's, he's such an elite group. Um, but it took a lot to get there. And that's what we want to share with you guys here today. So with that being said, to start the program off, let's go to Williamsville. What is your advice for making new friends on a new team? Making new friends on a new team? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I have a, 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 a great story for that. Um, you know, I played here with the Buffalo Bills for 12 years and, and was released by the Buffalo Bills um, and went on to play um, uh, with the Miami Dolphins for a year. And uh, I, w I didn't quite know how, you know, they were going to receive me, uh, how I was going to be treated there. And you know what I did? I, I did what I did with when I first got here to the Buffalo Bills. Um, you know what, I didn't come in as a guy who had um, accomplished anything. I came into a, a new situation uh, where I was going into another organization, and, I, and I've did this before, um, even when I left high school to go to Oklahoma State, you know, being around all these people that you did not know, um, only thing that I could do was be myself. I didn't try to uh, think that I was, you know, top grade football player or top grade athlete or whatever. Uh, what I did was that I, I made friends with a lot of people, talked to people uh, about a lot of different issues. It wasn't so much of, um, you know, making a transition from one football team to another. I was making a transition from myself personally as an individual 
to friends, to try to make friends. It wasn't always about football. Uh, you know, I tried to talk to a lot of the guys about, uh, you know, what did we like to do in their lives? Um, what, you know, what type of atmosphere do you have at home? Um, uh, what do you like to do? You know, do you like to play golf or do you like to, you know, play video games or stuff like that? So, um, you know what? The best thing for you to do is to be yourself uh, and realize that there are going to be a lot of different people that you're going to meet that are going to be different from you that might not like some of the things that you like. But I think that's what everybody in life, uh, we have to uh, pick and choose. Um, you know, the people that we're going to hang around, the people that we're going to talk to. Uh, so when you're definitely leaving one team and going to another, you know what, try not to be, you know, all that. Try to fit in, like, right away. Uh, you know, try to be as friendly and, and talk to that individual as best as you possibly can. Not just about football, but with life. And I think over throughout my career, I've done a lot of that where, you know what, I don't even talk about sports. I talk about a person's life, you know, what church they go to or, you know, are they involved in some type of clubs? You know, what are what is your family like? So more first and foremost, just try to be able to get the uh, get to know the people first before you start talking about, you know, football or baseball or whatever sports you might be going into. All right. Thank you, Williamsville. And let's go to uh, the folks in North Tonawanda. Hi, Mr. Thomas. I'm Carly. And before I start, I just wanted to let you know that me and my family are huge fans of you and the Bills. And my dad went to every home game you ever played in Buffalo. So we're big fans of you. He was really excited when I got to talk to you. Um, my question is, how did you feel when you were into, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2007? Um, it felt great. Um, you know, it was something that I didn't, you know, when I when I said back when I was little that uh, I wanted to have an opportunity to play in the National Football League, you know, uh, that was my only dream, um, to go in the National Football League, to maybe have an opportunity to uh, win a Super Bowl, um, you know, and, and that didn't happen. But along the years, um, as, as long as I played, when I got that call back in 2007, it seemed like the only thing that I can think about and the only thing that I did think about was all the people that helped me get to this point, uh, all the hard work, all the dedication uh, that I put into playing football. Um, you know, back started when I was a little kid, my mom washing my uniform, uh, my coaches, uh, my teachers at my junior high and high school. Uh, and in college, you know, there was a lot that went into me getting an induction back in 2007. And, um, you know, and, and at that time, you know, it still wasn't about me. It, it was more about the people that helped me get to this situation and get to this point in my life. Um, you know, my wife, who's from Buffalo, my four, um, my three kids at the time, and now I have four. My son is the only one that didn't get to see me play football, but just the people that helped me uh, get to this point, to get to where I'm at today, uh, it, it, it all came true. And, and even when I do go to the Hall of Fame, you know, I see guys like Marcus Allen, uh, Emmett Smith, uh, Troy Aikman, and I'm still like, wow, I can't believe those guys in the Hall. I'm in the Hall of Fame with those guys, you know. And um, uh, but uh, it, it's a great feeling. Um, you know, I, I wish I could have went into the Hall of Fame with a uh, Super Bowl victory with the Buffalo Bills, uh, but it didn't happen. But to be a part of an elite group, guys that you know that worked really hard to get to where they were and have some people help them along the way, uh, you feel special. And, and I feel very special and honored to be uh, with a uh, group of guys in the National Football uh Pro Football Hall of Fame, uh, to be associated with these guys. I know how hard work and the dedication uh, that they've put in uh, to get to that point, and uh, I'm really, truly blessed that uh, I'm a part of that fraternity.
And Mr. Thomas, I can say that we're blessed to have folks like you uh, be members of this fraternity, uh, not only uh, as an examples of athleticism, but uh, you know, getting to do exciting opportunities like we're doing here today with you guys. A great ambassador to us. So, um, and, and students, you heard him say that you know he, he talked about all the people we had to thank. And that's one of the resounding themes that we have in every one of these programs that we do is uh, surrounding yourselves with positive people and those people that are going to help you achieve that success in your life. Uh, so I'm getting a little feedback from someone, so I'm not sure what that background noise was, but just make sure all the schools are getting their, their microphones. Make sure they leave them muted until we call upon them. Uh, thank you, North Tonawanda. Let's go to, uh, let's go to California, Malibu. Alcohol or any control substance? Uh, my name is Nick Anthony, and my question was, what percent of your success was talent and what percent was work? Do your part. Um, wow, you know, um, it, it's really hard to, I guess, split up the percentages of what was talent. Obviously, God gave me a gift, uh, gave me a talent that, uh, uh, that I put to good use. Uh, but I think even with that, um, you have to put in hard work. And I tell people all the time, um, back when I was in high school, uh, back in 1983-84, you know, I wasn't even the best football player on my team. Um, you know, I, I was probably maybe fourth or fifth best football player on my team. But I had something that those guys didn't. Uh, those guys went on talent and talent alone. Uh, while I was lifting weights, while I was uh, running sprints, uh, getting my schoolwork done, uh, those guys weren't. I, I, I really tried as a person, as a human being, to try to get these guys to follow my lead, um, to, to exhaust every source that they possibly could to make their dream, because they all wanted to play in the National Football League, too. They wanted to get a scholarship uh, to go to college. And out of those, out of the five guys, including myself, I was the only one that got a scholarship. And those guys probably had more talent than I did, but I outworked them. Um, you know, I, I was a guy who I was, I was not going to sit around and not do anything. Uh, I was going to make sure I was going to make myself a better football player on and off the field. Uh, a lot of those guys went into uh, getting into trouble. And even when, you know, I go back today, go back to my hometown, I still, I still see those guys and I still talk to those guys. And, and one of the things that I always tell them is that, you know, what, if you have an opportunity or one of your kids have an opportunity to dream and dream big and, and get that scholarship, make sure you don't let them down. Make sure you don't let them down. And they always tell me, you know what, I let my own self down. The other guy is talking there. I knew I had the talent, but I just didn't put in the effort, the hard work to get to where you are today. And I tell you what, when, when, when people say that and, uh, and talk to me about that, you know, it's something that I, I truly believe in. You know, sure, you may have all the talent in the world, but you got to work at it. You got to make sure you try to do the right things every single day. Uh, I was talking to the class, uh, classroom earlier. You know, there's been a lot of ups and downs in my life, but always continue to get up. Always continue to strive to be the best I possibly can, and whatever it is, uh, not everybody's going to play football. Not everybody's going to be a professional athlete, but whatever you put your mind to and you focus on, and and and, and have and, and and get hard work, and let other and let other people help you, like people helped me growing up, you'll be successful. You 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 you'll fulfill your dream. It may not be the dream that you wanted to be, but I tell you what, it's still a dream. You can still dream for anything. Because had I not made it uh, to college, to the National Football League, I would have been successful at something. I guarantee you that. That's the mindset that I had. Because I know football couldn't last all my life, even if I did make it, if I didn't make it. Uh, I was going to make it at doing something. I don't know what that might have been. You know, I, football became a part of my life, but I can tell you one thing. Um, whatever that other thing might have been for me, I would have worked really hard at it. And, he, you know, he brings up a great point for you students. You know, he talks about others helping him get there. And, you know, for some reason, whatever it is, whatever, whatever the reason being, 
if we are an athlete and we need help on foot speed or strength, or we go to our coach, have no problem going to our coach saying, hey, I need to work on this, I need to work on this, I need to work on this. But as students, if we're struggling in a classroom or something like that, we, we don't want to ask for that help because maybe it's looked at as uncool to ask for help or for whatever reason, we don't ask for that help. People are in your lives for a reason. We all need someone uh, help throughout our lives. I today still seek counsel of, of family members, of my pastor, of other folks just to help me in different elements of my life. And I can guarantee you, Mr. Thomas has had a number of folks that have helped him uh, on and off the field as well. I, um, I still got teachers that I talked to in junior high and in high school and in college that helped me along the way because I, I to be honest with you, I mean, I wasn't a straight A student, but I know that I needed help in order to get to where I am today. And I was, not afraid to ask a teacher for help. I mean, I just just was whether my kids or, or whether my uh, uh, my classmates or were going to tease me about being the teacher uh, the teacher's pet or whatever. I was going to be that teacher's pet because I wanted help. I, I didn't want to fail, and I figured if I didn't do if I did this by myself, I probably would have failed. But I think as a human being, as a person, boy or girl. Everyone needs a little help, and there's nothing wrong with asking for a little help. I help people all the time. It's something because I knew growing up, the teachers, the coaches, the parents that helped me get to where I am today, I can't stop that now. I have to help other people because I want to see other people live their dream, just like my teachers and coaches and my parents helped me live my dream. So uh, I continue to help people, and uh, you know, I know – a lot of kids get teased today about, you know, asking questions or, or whatever. You know what? Just do it. Just do it. It's going to make you a better, better person. Definitely. Definitely. So thank you, Malibu. Let's go to uh, Montana, to Daly Elementary School. If you got your question, go ahead. Who was your inspiration when you were growing up? How did they inspire you? And what qualities do you look for in a person? What qualities do I look for? What qualities do you look forward to in what? One more time. In a person. In a person? person? Oh, okay. Um, you know, I, I would definitely have to say um, growing up, um, inspiration for me was um, with my mom. Um, I grew up a single parent. Uh, you know, I didn't have any brothers or sisters. So at an early age, you know, <laughs> I learned to cut the grass. I learned to wash dishes. I learned to vacuum, I learned to bake up my bed, I uh, learned to clean up, I learned to wash. I got my first job when I was 12 years old. Uh, uh, so I, I grew up really, really fast being uh, the only child from a single parent. Uh, so um, definitely my mom, she, my mom went to every home game at Oklahoma State University that I went to, uh, every high school game that I went to. She washed my uniform. You know, she made me dinner. She made me lunch. She was, you know, always the one that made sure I got my homework done. Um, you know, she was definitely uh, the inspiration to me because I watched my mom grow and, um, you know, work two jobs uh, to to, to uh, put food and, and clothes on my back uh, uh, to raise me up as a young man. Uh, she really inspired me to really keep moving forward, uh, to try to fulfill my dream. And I tell you, the best thing that ever happened to me was when I made made it into the National Football League. Um, I ended up doing what a lot of these football players do, uh, you know, for their mom and for their dad. I had an opportunity to buy my mom a new house. And, uh, and seeing her face and seeing her... Um, cry and, and really accept, you know, a gift that I gave her, but it, it wasn't a gift. She did what she had to do as a parent to try to raise me right. And uh, so definitely my mom and the qualities and stuff that I look for um, in, in kids or adults is I think the more important, the most important thing for me is that um, qualities in a person is their attitude about life, enjoying life. Uh, enjoying what you're doing. Enjoy, enjoy yourself as a kid right now. Enjoy these days because they're not going to come back. 
because you're going to get older. You're going to be sitting in a chair like me or whatever. And just enjoy it. Enjoy life. Have a great attitude about life and a great, have a great attitude about whatever you're trying to accomplish in life. Uh, so for me, uh, just having somebody that's, uh, that, that stays positive all the time. Sure, there's going to be some ups and downs, but stay, try to stay positive all the time. I make it a point to go to bed positive and wake up positive. Okay, and thank you very much, Daly. Let's go back to New York, to Rochester, 12 Corners Middle School. As a child, what events in your life do you believe helped shape your character? Well, um, I said it earlier. Um, um, things that uh, really shaped my life, um, like I said, growing up, um, only child to a single mom, really gave me the toughness, uh, uh, the character of, uh, of a human being that really cared about a lot of people. Um, I know there was one event in my life where I grew up with my grandmother for a couple of years. Um, and when I got drafted um, by the Buffalo Bills, before I could play my first game, my uh, great-grandmother passed away. And there was a letter that she left me um, that she had wrote years ago. And still to this day, it's a letter that I read all the time about how she wants me to help other people, how she wants me to be a role model, uh, not only to uh, my kids, but also uh, kids around the world. Try to do as much as you possibly can to help people. Uh, so it really wasn't an event that happened in my life at a young age. Uh, I do think that over time you go through different situations that changes you uh, to make you become a better person. Uh, so I, I've always believed that, you know, if you do good things for good people, good things will happen to you. Uh, I, I try to make people smile every single day. Uh, that's one of the things that I tell my kids and I tell my wife, you know what, because somebody could be struggling out there. Somebody could be having a bad day, uh, you know, and, and I run into a lot of people like that that, Ask me for a lot of uh, different things. Uh, so I always try to make a point to uh, make people smile, uh, to see if I can brighten their day. So like I said, this wasn't an event that really happened in my life that made me get this way. I just think that sometimes you're born with this. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes people do have to go through a little adversity in their life uh, at a young age uh, to, to be successful. But for me, I think it was just being raised up. Uh, by my mom, who was always there for me. And I think you, as you guys are hearing these responses, as you're looking at your six pillars, I know Mr. Thomas is big on respect and, and it would be one of the pillars that uh, really he exemplifies uh, well. But, you know, you're starting to hear the, you know, you hear the caring and the citizenship as well are so important to him and, and helping others. So, um, uh, so a great, great example of those two pillars as well, as well all the, all the pillars. Uh, let's go to... Um, Cheek to Wagga, and we will remind all the schools, make sure immediately after your question, make sure you go ahead and mute your microphone right afterwards. But go ahead, Cheek, Cheek to Wagga. How can we as middle school students grow? Oh, left. How can we as middle school students prove ourselves to be people of character? People with character? Yeah. I tell you what, I, 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 and, and my, uh, my youngest son goes to uh, one of the schools in Orchard Park. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Being in the middle school right now, I'm going to say, do a lot for your community. I, I was just back in my community back in Houston, Texas, uh, received another award uh, from the Hall of Fame back there. Uh, it's the community. I, I, we do a lot as a family in the community. Uh, you guys can, you know, being right now, the time right now in Buffalo, the weather's great. You know, get together and do something to try to help people, a car wash or something like that. I think growing up, you know, I was a big part of my community. Everywhere I've been in my life, whether it was in Houston, Texas, whether it was in Oklahoma or here in Buffalo, uh, even in Orlando where I lived for a couple of years, I was very, very huge in 
helping the community. Uh, I think helping the community, being in the community uh, is one of the things that uh, at a young age, you know, I think that builds a lot of character because it shows that you care about people. It shows that you care about other people's lives and try to help them, uh, you know, get through maybe a tough time or even get through, a, you know, a happy time. Uh, you know, I, I love to hang around people that always have a smile on their face. So you're at a young age right now, but I think right now, you know, this is an opportunity for you to get out and do some things for the community. And this this has definitely been uh, Thurman Thomas week uh, from the event that we had in uh, Missouri at your alma mater, <laughs> Missouri City, and then this broadcast. Yeah. So it's Thurman Thomas week here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, Williamsville, let's go ahead and uh, uh, next question. What is your view on the bounty system? What is my view on the bounty system? <laughs> uh, with the New Orleans Saints, um, I can tell you what. Um, I, this is the first I've ever heard of it. Uh, playing here in Buffalo for 12 years. Uh, you know, we talked. I talked to the other classroom earlier about character guys. The Buffalo Bills have always had character guys, uh, guys that do well on the field but do well off the field also. Uh, so when this bounty thing came out, this is the first I've ever heard of it. And I called Bruce Smith, Daryl Talley, Cornelius Bennett, and uh, and I and I asked them, did we have a bounty system? And all three guys were like, no, we just play hard-nosed football. We, <laughs> we were trying to get to Marino. We were trying to get to Elway as many times as we possibly could. We didn't have a bounty system. And I, I think it's wrong, you know, that, uh, that there was a bounty system. Uh, you know what? You can go out. You can play as hard as you possibly can. You don't need that. Uh, I, I just think in the time that I played, uh, you didn't need that. You just went out and tried to play as hard as you possibly could. Uh, you know, you tried to hit guys as hard as you could anyway. Well, so why put out a bounty on them? I mean, that's just, it, it was crazy when I heard it, even to still think about it. And you hear all the lawsuits that are going on right now. Um, it's, um, I, I just didn't understand it. And I, I think if you love a sport, uh, whatever sport it may be, why do something like that? Uh, you're out there to do your best anyway, so why would you want to put a bounty or something like that on somebody else to try to maybe hurt somebody? Uh, yes, we get hurt. All, athletes get hurt all the time. Uh, so, I mean, you can go back and say, well, he might have had a bounty. No, I mean, just the way it was. You get hurt at any moment during the football game. To have a bounty on it and to have Greg Williams, the coach, talk about it, and have it on film uh, is just wrong. And I think what's really gotten to the point is that the New Orleans Saints were warned about this. They were told about this. And there might be some more stuff that's going to come out. But they were told about this bounty to stop doing it. And they didn't apply by the rules. They kept it under wrap, and it finally got out, and it came back to haunt them. So uh, now you're having players uh, sue you know, Roger Goodell, the NFL. So, uh, this is something that I think that never should have happened. You're out there, you love the sport, you're out there trying to do your best anyway, so why have a bounty on somebody? And, you know, I, I, I love that question from you guys because, I mean, think about it, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a character character issue. It really is. I mean, yeah. and, and, you know, it's coming back to the pillar of, of caring. Yeah, it is a physical sport. It's a violent sport, but you still, you know, you want to hit someone hard, but you don't want to hurt them, so to have a bounty – it kind of goes against that 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 pillar of, of, of caring, uh, as well as citizenship. So, uh, with that yep. being said, let's go let's go to uh, North Tonawanda. Hey, Mr. Thomas. Uh, my name is James Conti, and I was wondering if you had to describe your game or your life philosophy, what would it be? My game or my life philosophy? Um, <clears throat> you know. The perfect game would be for every day for me to wake up and everything go very, very smoothly. But I know that's not how life goes. Um, I know that throughout life, uh, you have your ups and your downs. Uh, but it's how you get up. 
and how you fight back and how you try to accomplish your dreams. Uh, you know, we were just talking about with the others, uh, with the other class about, you know, perseverance, um, uh, character type guys, uh, getting off the floor four times after losing four Super Bowls, getting back up, continuing to strive to be the best that you possibly could. Um, you know, I, I think that's how my life has been, ups and downs. Um, but I've always, since high school, I've always gotten back up. Uh, and, I, and once I got to the Buffalo Bills, you know, like I say, losing four Super Bowls every single year, you know, I tried to, uh, we tried to, as a team, accomplish something. Every single day I tried to accomplish something, not only as a football player, but as a human being. Uh, and so um, that's the way I kind of live my life. Um, I, I enjoy the great times. I enjoy the good times. I don't get down as much when bad things happen. I try to stay positive as much as I possibly can throughout my life. Uh, but like I said, you're going to have your ups and downs. And, um, you know, and, and the one thing I think that has really gotten me through a lot of this stuff is that, you know what, I care about other people. I respect other people. Uh, I respect the things that they do. Uh, I love talking to people. I love meeting people. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I try to stay positive every single day. I have four kids. Uh, I, I love them dearly, and I try to, uh, you know, teach them uh, the right things to do. Uh, they're kids. They're gonna they're gonna mess up every now and then, but I make sure that I try to limit those mistakes, you know, with my kids. Uh, my kids are 22, 20, 15 are my girls, and I have a 10-year-old son. So, um, you know, I, I just, I try to live my life through them, try to, try to raise them in the right way. Uh, so, but my kids are just like myself. Um, you know, my, my kids hate getting bad grades. Uh, you know, they're always doing work around the house. Uh, you know, they're just hard workers. And, uh, like I said, everything's not going to go your way, but it's how you get up and how you finish things is how it's going to turn out for you. Uh, my, my mom always told me, and it's something I carry with me now, you, to, to, to truly enjoy the highs, you got to have the lows in life. So that's what I've, I've, something I've always can, carried with me as well. So let's go to Malibu um, in California. Hey, Mr. Thomas, my name is Brendan, and our next question is, how did you know it was t when it was time to step forward and lead? Um, you know, it, it happened, it happened actually while I was playing football. Um, um, I had just been released by the Buffalo Bills and I went to, uh, uh, the Miami Dolphins and, uh, and it happened right on the field. I think it was the sixth game of the year. Um, I, I was age, I was 34 years old, um, I just torn. They just told me that. I told them that I tore my ACL, and they were like, "No, you didn't." I was like, "Yes, I did. I can tell." Um, and when I get back to Miami, um, I wanted to have my retirement papers waiting on me because I knew it was time. Uh, being 34 years old and having all of the wear and tear on my body, I didn't want to. Uh, go through eight, nine, ten months of rehab uh, and, and possibly miss another season. Uh, so I, I knew at that time it was time for me to go. Um, really, to be all, all honest with you, I, it, I probably should have left a year before that when the Bills released me. I probably shouldn't have played another year, uh, but I was so upset with the Buffalo Bills for releasing me uh, that I wanted to give it one more try. But after I hurt my knee in that sixth game of the season, I knew it was time because uh, I knew the end was coming. It just came a little bit sooner than I wanted it to. Uh, but uh, going from playing football into my life to retiring, I was ready to do it. I was prepared to do it. I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to spend more time with my family. As, you get, as I got older uh, and playing in the National Football League, uh, I knew that I wanted to start spending a little bit more time uh, with my family. That's why I have a, 
my family have always said, you know, they wanted me to get into coaching. Um, that's something I just won't do because I know how much it takes away from my family. Uh, um, but I do talk to a lot of players on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, we have great communication uh, between some of the older players and the younger players uh, with myself. So uh, I, I knew it was time for me to go. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to spend more time uh, with my daughters. I wanted to spend more time uh, with my wife uh, and my son and uh, just wanted to be not – Dad, the football player, and just wanted to be just plain old simple dad. Thank you, Daly. And let's go back to New York, Rochester, 12 Corners. Hi, Mr. Thomas. My name is Corey Hill. Which character do you believe is your strongest and your weakest and why? And can you oh. can you repeat those characters, those pillars? A Which character do you believe is your strongest, your weakest, and why? Um, wow, you know, who? I don't know about it. You know, I try to be strong at all of them, <laughs> uh, but I, but I think the one thing that I really truly believe in, and is um, believing in yourself. I didn't know if that's on there, but believe in yourself. And I think all those things will will fall into place. Um, I, I believe that I was going to be successful no matter what. Um, I, I believed in uh, what a lot of the coaches and what a lot of the teachers were telling me. Um, I believed in just about everything. Um, that I was going to do, that I was going to be successful. Uh, I trusted a lot of people, uh, and a lot of people trusted in me. Uh, I had a, there was a lot of caring people in my life uh, that cared about my situation. I cared about their situation. Um, you know, th there's, just, there's just, for me, there's a lot of things. I can probably sit up here and talk for an entire week, but I know you guys are ready for the weekend. But, um you know, I always believed in myself and always trusted a lot of people. Um, I know sometimes that I, I probably made the mistake of trusting too many people, but I always give people an opportunity to try to make an impact not only in other people's lives, but try to make an impact in my life also. And I definitely will return the favor. But uh, I just think, you know, trusting people, uh, believing in yourself, because with, without you, without the hard work that you put into, it's not going to happen. You have to take it upon yourself uh, to, to fulfill your dream, to do what's right, to try to help other people, and to help yourself. And I, he shared this with the early group, and I don't think he shared with this, this group, but uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, the football player, uh, was so well prepared, he could have played any position on that field on the offensive side, and he knew it that well. Uh, he could have ran the, ran the team as quarterback if Jim Kelly was to go out because <laughs> he knew the system so well. He was so well prepared. And I guarantee you he takes that same preparation into all elements of his life, uh, to being a CEO and president of a business, to being, uh, I don't want to say the head of household, but my, my missus is always the head of the household, but uh, to be the, you know, <laughs> To be the uh, to be the to, to, to be the, the the cornerstone of the household, uh, and so and to be a father and all those things. It takes preparation. It takes work. It takes perseverance. All the things that he shared uh, to do that. So, uh, thank you, Twelve Corners. Let's go to Cheek Dewago. Yeah, right here. What lessons can you take from the football field to life? Well, I I think you know, you know. Um, like you just talked about, um, being prepared. Um, I was always now. Now I'm asking the question. <laughs> I was I was always prepared on the football field, just like I'm always prepared um, in life right now. Um, I, I live one day at a time. Um, I I try to help people every day. I prepare. You know I'm I'm ready. I know today is going to end, and I'm ready. I'm already prepared for tomorrow. Uh, it's just the way that I go about my life. Uh, I worked as hard on the football field as I'm working hard as my, my second life, my retirement life. 
Uh, I can. I help my f uh, football buddies on the football field. I continue to help my football buddies off the field. Um, I, uh, I I prepare tirelessly. I, I always looking for improvement, not only in other people's lives. I look for improvement in my life, and I tried to do that when I played with the guys and playing football. Um, I did I did a lot of charity work. I gave back to the community, and I still do that. Uh, I, I just totally believe that you prepare yourself in a certain way. Um, like I did on the field, off the field, and those same results will come back to you. And uh, so, so far, so good for me. I just, uh, I, uh, I, I enjoy life to the fullest. Uh, I was very saddened and very hurt by a good friend of mine passing away um, uh, about a week ago, Junior Seiya. I'm sure y'all heard uh, about that. Um, I talked to his wife about an hour. So, um you know, whatever I did on the football field, um, you know, I carry over into life, which was me about helping my teammates, in which now I still help my teammates, but now it's a, a, a wider version of it. I try to help as many people as I possibly can. Thank you, Chief DeWaga. And we've got about, looks like about 10 minutes left, uh, so maybe we can try to get through as many. Maybe we'll get into through another round. Let's go. I know Williamsville has uh, had to bail out, so we'll, we'll skip past them. Uh, let's go back. I, I love calling on them because they're, I always look, like looking at their classroom because they're all decked out. Uh, North Tonawanda, go ahead. I think there's a few Bills fans in there. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Thomas. My name is Taylor. My question for you is, what sacrifices were necessary in your life to become a professional athlete? Well, I, well, you know what? There was a lot of sacrifices um, that I had to. Uh, I, I think, first of all, in my early in my career in junior high school and high school and college, um, uh, th that sacrifice was from my mom. You know, they had to sacrifice. My mom had to sacrifice a lot of things for me in order for me to accomplish. Um, uh, but once I got to the National Football League, you know, I had to give up a lot of the things that I was – that I used to do. Um, I had to give up a lot of, you know, maybe going out to the club or maybe um, um, letting loose of some friends that were kind of bad influence uh, with me uh, when I made it to the National Football League. You hear a lot of these athletes about, you know, going broke and having an entourage and things like that. There were some ch tough choices that I had to make as a, uh, as a human being growing up especially when I got to the National Football League. And some of them were, um, were letting go of some uh, friendships that I'd had for a very, very long time. So, uh, you know, I had to give that up uh, because it wasn't the best for me or my family. So uh, there, there were those were probably the toughest sacrifices that I had to make uh, being in the National Football League, knowing that, you know, I, I, I had made it. I had some money in the bank. I had money on. I had a nice house. I had a nice car. Uh, my wife had a nice car. So, and, and there were kind of people that were kind of clinging on to me that weren't there to try to help me and my family. And so those were probably the toughest sacrifices, the toughest choices that I had to make, um, you know, being in the National Football League and being a professional athlete and, and as soon as I had my first kid back in 1989, those choices changed again. Um, you know what? I had to spend more time, you know, with my family. Uh, I had to raise a kid. I had to raise, you know, take care of my wife, take care of the house, uh, and do things like that. And once I got to, you know, after having three kids, I had four. And so my responsibilities, all that stuff changed for me at, at, the older I got in life. So. There are some circumstances that I, there are some tough choices that I had to make along the way, but uh, I think with life you do have to make some tough choices, and, and those were uh, probably the toughest choices, you know, separating myself away from the friends that weren't trying to do good for themselves. Thank you very much, North Tonawanda. Let's go to California. Malibu? Uh, hi, Mr. Thomas. How do you maintain a level of excellence when you lose? Well, you know, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because you want to win all the time. Uh, you know what? Like I said, I, I think, you know, 
you know, you have to give your props to the other people, uh, the other team that wins. You know, they had a better game than you. Uh, listen, I, I like to talk to the other school. I lost four Super Bowls in a row, okay? And let me tell you, after every last one of them, it's hard walking out on that football field and shaking the guy's hand knowing that the other team's hand knowing that they beat you. It's, it's definitely tough, and uh, some guys don't do it very well, but uh, that don't handle losing very well. I didn't handle losing very well, and then, but I didn't, want, I didn't want people to say that I was a sore loser. I didn't want people to, to have that rap on me. You know, it's, Like I said, it's very difficult to try to walk over that field and, and, uh, and shake another person's hand. I tell a story to, my, to the last class I was with. The last Super Bowl we played against Dallas. Uh, I had fumbled. They ran Dallas. Somebody from Dallas ran in for a touchdown. We ended up losing the football game 30-13. to 13. And after the game, Emmitt Smith comes over to me uh, with his niece, and he tells his niece sh to shake the best, shake the hand of the best running back in the National Football League. Now, he was telling his niece to tell me that. Hey, I just lost. You know, I, we had just lost our fourth Super Bowl in a row. And... Uh, and that right there was like, wow, you know, that's special right there that Emmett would tell me that after a Super Bowl loss, our fourth one in a row, their second back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, their back-to-back -back Super Bowl win. So uh, it's very hard, but you know what? I, I think when you surround yourself with, with people like that, and Emmett was a great friend, and he still is a great friend. I knew him uh, when he first came into the National Football League. For him to say that meant a lot to me, and those are the type of people that I care about. Those are the type of people that I want hanging around me. Sure, yeah, I'm upset about losing four Super Bowls, and especially losing to the Cowboys, who I hate. Um, yeah, it was difficult, but you know what, though? I, I think as a human being, you grow, and you grow, and you learn how to accept things, but to that point, you know, I didn't think that I was a loser because I was going to still continue to come back and fight and, and try to win the Super Bowl. And even though we didn't, um, uh, you know, I, I still kept that fight and I still kept my belief in, you know what, it's just a game. I'm, I'm enjoying the game and hopefully come back the following year and try to win the Super Bowl. But it, it's very difficult. But I think as a human being, deep down inside, you know the right thing and the wrong thing to do. And I think that, that's just a perfect example of the character that the Buffalo Bills had during that time. To get back up after, you know, each Super Bowl and, and to repeat it, you know, to get back to that championship game, that, that says so much about not the talent but the character. Because, of, of, you know, you could be defeated by that. Uh, but to come back each year and rebound from that and, and make, it, make it that far is just a, it's a really a testament to the character of the organization. Uh, but it's also a, a, a lesson on we don't always win. We don't always get an A on the test. We don't always win the Super Bowl. We don't always get um, make the team in high school, you know, whatever it might be. Our, people always use the example, Michael Jordan got cut his freshman year. You know, the greatest basketball player of all time was cut, you know, his, his freshman year. So, I mean, you, you don't always it, – it's how you respond to that adversity uh, that really is a true, true, true sign of, 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 of your character. And someone that I would Can I say something right quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, I, and, and one last thing is that, you know, yes, we lost for Super Bowl, but I think I, as, an, as me personally, I gained something more than that, uh, you know, winning a championship. I gained a lot of friends, a lot of, you know, I, the, the top ten closest people in my circle are probably ten of my ex-teammates. I mean, that's – how close we are, you know, I, I gained uh, uh, a bigger family, so to say, uh, uh, you know, Jim and Bruce and Andre and Daryl and all those guys. Uh, like I said, yeah, we wanted to win, but more importantly, you know, we respect and we still care about each other. And, uh, 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 and I think that's what has really gotten me to this point is that I know that I can always call on guys uh, and depend on other guys. And uh, those guys that went to those four straight Super Bowls with me, those are guys that I can depend on. And I think if you guys were to ask Mr. Thomas, would he trade the uh, four Super Bowl victories to lose his, those friends 
I guarantee he'd stick with what he has now as four as those ten great friends. So, um, so he definitely got something out of it. Let's go to. Uh, we got time for uh, one more question, and then we're going to have to conclude. Let's go to Montana, to D Daly Elementary. Nice and loud. Shh. What are your Louder. Dreams and what are your future Can dreams you and goals? Can you speak up? Did you unpause it? Yeah, louder, as loud as you what can. What are your future dreams and goals? My future dreams and goal is for for me to live on like a 500 acre farm, um, have all my kids uh, graduate from college, um, to see them be successful, to see them um, do some of the things that I was doing when I was growing up, which was helping other people helping people along the way, uh, being a positive role model uh, for, for not only kids but adults. Uh, just uh, trying to, you know, leave my impact and leave my mark on my kids and, and the community uh, for everyone to try to help each other with whatever problem that we may be having at that at that time so um you know i own an energy company right now you know i'm, I'm I, i've been working since i've been retired and uh but you know my dream is just to enjoy life as long as i'm here on this planet and try to help people uh do the best they possibly can to try to make people smile every single day and and to remain positive throughout uh throughout some tough times that we're going through right now Try to remain positive through everything. Well, I think we can all say you've, you've made all of us smile today, Mr. Thomas, so we, we greatly appreciate that. And uh, are there any last remarks that you would uh, like to share or to, to close the program out? Well, you know what? Uh, I know I probably could have sat up here and talked for a number of hours about a lot of different topics. You know, I try to keep the keep it on the same level that I did with the, with the past group, but... Uh, you know what, just um, keep living your dream. Uh, and sometimes dreams change. Sometimes you might have to go a different route. But uh, whatever it is that you want to do, do not let anyone stop you from doing it. Work as hard as you possibly can to try to achieve that dream. I know there's a lot of people that wanted their dream to become reality at the age of 20. And sometimes, that dream came true at the age of 30 or 40, but I guarantee you those people did not quit. So um, keep working for your dreams. Uh, be nice to other people. Uh, it's okay to trust certain people. Uh, work hard. Try to be successful. But whatever it is that you're trying to do, uh, go 110% at it. Well, Mr. Thomas, just on behalf of uh, all the staff here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we want to say thank you for taking time out of your busy day for um, uh, to talk about uh, your message and your life life experiences. Uh, I know I, personally I've, I've benefited from it, and I guarantee you these students uh, can, can say the same. So students, if you'd join me just for a second and unmute your microphones and join me and give them a, a thank you to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mr. Thomas. <laughs> speech and people keep clapping as you're trying to share your message so I, I got a little taste exactly right. <laughs> so 
Uh, just to all the schools, thank you very much. We appreciate your guys' attendance. Without you, this wouldn't have been possible. You guys had some awesome questions. Uh, we, we, I just love doing this program. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, ho hopefully someday you get to make the trek here to Canton, Ohio. Uh, but if not, take care.